Your issue is not the situation. The issue is your expectation. Some of you have been frustrated with the results you've been experiencing because you have not attained that goal yet. Now, for some of you, it's simply because it's not time. You need to prepare. But for others, God said we, the diagnosis is that your expectation is off. Your expectation is wrong. You can't expect goodness and mercy to follow you if you're not following the Lord. Some of you have been doing the wrong thing expecting good to come into your life. And you're frustrated because you've been living under the lie of thinking that what you sow, you will not reap. Some of you have been sowing apple seeds expecting oranges. Be not deceived. Whatsoever man sows, that will he also The time reap. has come and the kingdom of God is now at hand. Change the way you think and believe in the good news. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Travis Alexis Newsom, and I'm delighted that of all the things you could be doing at this very moment, you have chosen to spend this time here with me tonight. And it is my sincere desire and expectation that this experience will help you to become all that you were created to be. So I encourage you, make sure you're ready. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, drop a comment in the chat section below, share this link, and tell everyone you know that we're about to grow together as we explore the keys of the kingdom. Greetings and good evening once again, everyone. I am so glad that you're here. I'm excited that you're here. I always say that because I'm always excited that you're here. And before I do anything else, I want to give a special shout out to the KOTK fam. You know who you are. Those of you who have subscribed to my YouTube channel, you have shared the links. You have engaged with, engaged with me on my various social media platforms and you have allowed me the privilege of praying with you. You have prayed for me in this work and shown your support in a myriad of ways. I want to make sure that you know I do not take your support, your presence, your prayers, your engagement. I don't take any of it for granted. And I'm so grateful that you're here. Make sure to go ahead and light up the chat. You know how we do. High five one another. Uh, let us know how you're feeling. Let us know what God has done. Let us know the good things that are happening in your life. Let's get the chat, get, let's get the chat going. Let's light it up. Somebody say hello in the chat. Somebody might want to say hallelujah in the chat. Somebody want, might want to say praise the Lord in the chat. Uh, somebody just might want to say, I'm just glad to be here. Whatever you want, just let it be positive. Something that is uplifting. Put it in the chat right now. And perhaps you're watching. You have never seen one of my videos. You have no idea who I am. Somebody just sent you this link and you're like, who is this guy? Well, first and foremost, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. I do not believe in happenstance. I don't believe in coincidence. I do believe that you are meant to be here at this time watching this video, and I do not take your presence for granted either. I encourage you, make sure you drop a line in the chat section below. Say something. Let us know how you heard about this work. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, let us know even when you're watching this. I'm curious in the time frames that people watch these videos. Some of you are watching during the premiere. Some of you may be watching later on. I'm curious about that as well. But please know whatever you say in the chat, we are glad that you're here and we don't take your presence for granted. Make sure you connect with me on my various social media platforms. You can reach me as Travis Alexis Newsom on Facebook, on Instagram, on X, on Threads, on all of them. Somebody say all of them. Make sure that you also email me. You can reach me at travis.alexis.newsom at gmail.com. That's a great way to send me your prayer request if you would like for me to agree with you in prayer concerning something, or perhaps uh, you have a testimony that you would like to share something good that's happened, especially as, re as it relates to this work or the subject matter here. Would love to hear that. Also, make sure to mail me. You can reach me via snail mail, Travis Alexis Newsom, P.O. Box number 48, Riverside, Illinois, 60546, in the good old U.S. of A. Wow. Also, make sure that you subscribe. <laughs> I'm enjoying doing that. 
I told you that may be a normal thing. But make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, Travis Alexis Newsom. That way you can turn on notifications and be notified anytime I upload a new video. Not only do I upload KOTK from periodically, from time to time, I may upload a short video on my channel. So you don't want to be left out of the loop on that. All of these things are designed to inspire you, to help you to become all that you created to be. So once again, I'm so glad that you're here. I always forget like I'm, I always feel like I'm forgetting something. What should I say? What else should I say? Ah, yes, two things. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If these videos have been blessing you and you have great expectation tonight, hit that thumbs up button. In fact, even in the chat section, if you have great expectation, if you're excited tonight, put in the chat, say, I'm excited. Yeah, say, I'm excited in the chat. Also, make sure you share this link. Some of you do this faithfully and I appreciate your support. Others may not. You may not think to share the link, but if these videos are blessing you, be a blessing to someone else and show your support for this work. Help me get the word out about this message and about this powerful word uh, that's about to go forth and the other words that have gone forth in times past. But nevertheless, please know that I take your support and uh, I'm grateful for your support. I'm appreciative of your support and I'm appreciative of your presence. How many are just glad to be here? Just put that in the chat. Say, I'm glad to be here in the land of the living with more time to do what I was created to do and to become all that I was created to become. Oftentimes we take that for granted, but uh, we need to make sure we take a moment from time to time, every day really, to give God thanks and to say, God, I just thank you for your presence. I thank you for giving me breath in my body. I know that sounds like one of those old school praises. I'm thankful for a reasonable amount of, reasonable amount of strength and health. But those are things that we tend to take for granted. And with all the vicissitudes of life, the ups and downs, and all of the drama of life, it's good to pause and to take a moment and reflect on the basic things that we often overlook and give God thanks for that. In fact, I think that's a great way uh, to segue into our moment of worship. Many of you know, we take time before we get into the teaching, before we get into the message and the discussion, we take time to worship to prepare our hearts for what it is that God wants to say to us. And I just encourage you right where you are, just begin to thank him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, God, we worship you. We honor you. Come on, right where you are, just begin to open your mouth and thank him. It can be for the simplest things. It can even be for something that you're believing God for. There's power in giving God thanks. There's power in giving God praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are my portion You are my portion This is a melody that just stirred up in my heart the spirit brought to mind he just put it in my heart and I couldn't let it go and I began singing it earlier and I believe that I was meant to sing it in this video tonight and so I just encourage you, if you know that the Lord is your portion, there's a passage of scripture even out of Lamentations 3.24 where it reads, The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I hope in him. And in another place in Psalm 119.57, it says, You are my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep your words. When we say that the Lord is our portion, we are acknowledging that he is our inheritance, that we find out all that God has blessed us with in him. And if you think about the if you think of the implications of that, that's quite powerful. But just lift your hands and just begin to declare if you believe that God is your portion, if you believe that He is your inheritance, that the inheritance that we have in God is not necessarily about things so much as it is about Him and our relationship with Him and the blessings that He enjoys being ours as well. Yeah. You are my portion, yeah, you are my portion, you are my portion, Jesus, you are my portion. 
Father, we thank you that you are our portion. And we thank you for the understanding that you are our inheritance. God, that we are your heirs, that we are heirs of you, God, heirs of you, joint heirs of Christ. God, we thank you for the great inheritance we have in you, for your kingdom. God, your word lets us know that it's your good pleasure to give your children the kingdom. So we thank you. We don't take your blessings for granted. And God, we pray tonight that as we delve into your word, we pray, God, that you would stir up our hearts, God. As we delve deep into your word, God, expose those things within us that don't look like you. Expose those things within us, God, that are hindering us from becoming all that you have created us to become and walking in all that you created us to walk in. God, we want your good and perfect will for our lives, God. We understand that your will is what's best for us. We understand, Lord God, that your way is better. We understand, God, that we're in desperate need of your mercy and of your grace. And aside from you, we have no good thing. But in you, we find everything we need. So, Father, we submit to you tonight. And we're asking that you would have your way. Speak to us, Lord God. Stir our hearts. Transform us. Renew our minds, Lord God. Change us from the inside out. Take us to a higher place in you. Be glorified in and through us, Lord God, that we might be light in the world, in this dark and dying world. God, that you would use us to be light. That you would use us to spread hope, not just in what we say, not just in this time where we share this video, but God in how we live. This is our prayer and this is our expectation. And somebody said in Jesus' name, Amen, amen, amen. Wow. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles, if you have them, to James chapter 1. I'm going to look at a few verses here. As always, I'm excited about tonight. I know that God is going to bless us all. James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. And I'm going to read in your hearing out of the New King James Version. And it reads, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Verse seven, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Hmm. Verse eight, he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. I wanna highlight verse seven. It reads, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Wow. Now let's go to the NIV version of that. I've read in your hearing out of the, the New King James Version, but I want to look at how it reads in the NIV, the New International Version. Verse 7 in particular, it says, That person should not expect, wow, to receive anything from the Lord. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. I was moved to talk with you tonight from the subject, the power of expectation. The power of expectation. I want us to take a moment and look at the definition of that word expectation or to expect. It simply means to consider probable or certain. In another place, it says to anticipate or look forward to coming or occurrence of. I'm going to say that again. To anticipate or look forward to. Somebody say look forward to. Put in the chat. Look forward to the coming or occurrence of. Another definition simply says to suppose, like we read in the NKJV, to suppose or to think. Wow. The intransitive verb defines it as to wait Wow. Or to stay or simply to look forward to. So we're noticing a pattern here. In all these definitions, in all this entire the entirety of the breakdown of these definitions, I should say, it speaks to an anticipation. Um, it speaks to an outcome, a result that one anticipates or looks forward to. That when you have expectation, that means you are believing. For those of you who saw the series that I did some time ago, we wrapped up a powerful series entitled The Gospel of the Kingdom. And many of you who watched that series, you will recall that one of the key words in that series had to do with believe, which in the Greek is pastuo, which simply means to think to be true, or as I like to put it, for something to become real to you. Notice in the text here 
the writer James is talking about uh, the things that we can expect from the Lord. He is encouraging the saints. He is saying in all that you go through, if you lack wisdom, one of my favorite verses actually is verse five. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, watch this, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But then we go into our text where it says, but my God, let him ask in faith. Wow. So we've defined faith in previous episodes of KOTK as the word of God fixed in our heart. That, that faith is being settled on what God says. That faith is being firm or fixed on what God says. Hebrews puts it this way, that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So by faith, we understand that the word of God is settled in heaven. And to have faith is to allow that same word to be settled in our hearts. Can I say that again? By the word of God, we understand that forever, O Lord, the psalmist says, your word is settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. So to have faith in God is to let that same word, the truth of God, that settled in heaven to be settled in our heart. That matters because if we look further down in our text in verse eight, it says that such who doubts is like a wave, is like a boat driven, tossed to and fro in the sea. Verse eight, he, who, he is double-minded or he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Because how many know when you're not settled on something, mm, you're unstable. It was interesting. We uh, bought a couch uh, a few years ago. Feels like a few years ago. Maybe it wasn't even a year ago. Maybe just over a year ago. But nevertheless, we bought a couch. And we liked the couch. It fit with our living room and all this stuff. But we noticed that the couch did not seem stable. It did not seem it would not stay in one place. You would sit down in the couch and it would seem to move or to shift. And it bothered me more so bothered my wife. She really was bothered by it. She noticed that every time somebody sat in the couch, it would seem to move. It was not fixed in a certain place. It moved. It was unstable. So when he's talking about somebody being unstable, he, he means that he, he's talking of someone whose mind is not fixed. It's not set. It's not focused. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So it's deep because he says here, let not such a man who doubts, pay attention here, who doubts expect to receive anything from the Lord. Now that seems a bit harsh, doesn't it? Right? I often think of the, the account of the man found in Mark chapter nine, who had a son who was demon possessed. And he goes to Jesus' disciples, you know the story. He goes to Jesus, and even if you don't, review Mark chapter nine. But nevertheless, for the sake of time, I'm gonna paraphrase. He goes to Jesus' disciples. His disciples aren't able to cast the demon out. The man is discouraged. His son has been dealing with this issue for quite some time. He's tired of seeing his son. He's grieved by seeing his son do harm and damage to himself. And so he cries out to Jesus. He goes to Jesus and Jesus says, if do you believe? And he says, essentially the man says, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. He says, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Now I'm going to tell you why I'm so struck by the scripture every time I think about it. Because many times we're taught to have faith, be certain, be fixed, somewhat like we're talking about tonight. But here's an example of a man who had doubt. Now how does this line up <laughs> with the passage that we just read? Did you ever ask yourself that question when you consider accounts like that? This man is wrestling with doubt and faith. But yet here in James, he says, let not those who doubt expect to receive anything from the Lord. Wow, he is unstable in all his ways. My God have mercy. So how do we reconcile the account of this man whose son was delivered, by the way, with this particular account or with this particular text? And I want to say something and my prayer is that you hear me in the spirit. My prayer is that you take heart to what I'm about to say. It is possible to have faith and to wrestle with doubt at the same time. 
It is possible. The key is to settle on your faith. Can I say that again? It is possible to be people of faith and to deal with life issues that seem to contradict what God said and to, and to begin to think, hmm, did God really say that? Oh, it's possible. Or is, is what the word says really true? Is it accurate? It's possible. Can we be real? Can we be honest? How many have been there? You believe in God. You trust God. You've seen God come through. But then you go through a season in life or a situation. And perhaps it's something that you've never encountered before. And it challenges your faith. And you face what one might consider somewhat of a crisis of faith. Have you been there? Lift your hands if you've been there. Put it in the chat if you've been there. And your faith is tested. And you begin to wrestle and struggle. But I'm reminded of the words of Jesus, where he said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and it will obey you. I love that he says mustard seed. You know why? Because mustard seed of all the seeds is probably among the smallest of the seeds. But yet he's saying with that little bit of faith, you can move mountains. Now think to yourself. Compare the size of a mustard seed to a mountain. That's how powerful faith, even when small, is. And ladies and gentlemen, even in the presence of doubt, if you have that much faith, you can move the mountains in your life. Oh yes, yes you can. And sometimes we fall into condemnation because we say to ourselves, if we trust God, how is it that I had the capacity to struggle here? Have you been there? If I trust God, how is it that I have the capacity to doubt? How, how is it that I have the capacity to rethink or to reconsider what God said as if he's not faithful, as if he will not come through? No, God doesn't condemn us for our lack of faith necessarily, but he encourages us to have faith. But here in our text, the writer says, let he who asks of God expect, let him have faith. No doubting. <laughs> what is he saying? Essentially, he's saying, I know everything that you go through. In fact, let's go to verse, verse 2. Let's look at the context here. He says, verse 2, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Verse 3, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Wow. So we know that our faith will be tested. Our faith must be tested. Hello, somebody. This testing doesn't make us or it doesn't create faith. I want to be clear on this because sometimes we say, oh, uh, this testing, it, 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 it makes us, if you will, it produces patience. That's not necessarily what he's saying here as much as he's saying that the testing of our faith causes our faith to manifest in the form of patience. It's not the test that makes you patient. It's your faith that makes you patient. Can I say that again? It's not the test of life that make you patient. Because how many know you can go through a test and if you don't have faith, patience is not going to magically appear. Hello, somebody. No, patience doesn't come from the test. Patience comes from faith. And the test that you go through allows your faith to be seen or to manifest in the form of patience. And it's interesting that he talks about patience here because patience has to do with waiting. And if you recall, when we looked at our definition, it's talked about expectation being a waiting on the Lord or to look forward to. It's not just a wait that you are, how should I say, stagnant or still, but it is a waiting where you are looking forward to, you are anticipating, you are preparing for it. You know, a few videos ago, maybe it was even in a video last week, no, I think it was two weeks ago, did a message entitled Clear the Air. And I was encouraged to exhort you all to get your house in order. Not just because we're coming into the close of another year, you know, we're in the month of October. A lot of times this time of year, people are like, okay, get ready for the new year. This ritual, get ready for the new year as if abracadabra, something magical is going to happen when the clock strikes 12. It's just the symbolism of time passing. 
That's the significance of us shifting into a new year. It's a symbolism of time passing. It reminds us that time is not standing still, but it is moving. It is progressing. So I encouraged everyone and I said, this is a season to get your house in order because God wants to bring some things into your life, but there's no space for it because of the clutter. But if you clear the air or if you clear your house or if you get your house in order, you'll make space for the blessing. My God, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I think about the example of really with each of our daughters, but our first more specifically, I have three girls. And when our first was born right beforehand, we did not have the experience of having the child before. All of it was new to us. But I noticed we went into the space of nesting. That's what it's called. And those who are parents, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We're in anticipation of the child being birthed, in anticipation of the child coming forth. You begin to do things around the house, even the father. You begin to stuff like getting the, the room ready, getting the crib ready, getting the car seat installed, all those things. You start doing all these things in anticipation, my God, have mercy, of the baby's arrival. That's really what it means to expect from a biblical sense. When you have expectation of the Lord, when your hope is in him, when you expect him to do what he said he would do, how many know that that work or that expectation works in us and it moves us to function in such a way that makes space for the very thing we're expecting of the Lord? Can I say that again? When you expect of the Lord, when you expect in the biblical sense, not just say, oh, I'm looking forward to, but when you expect from your heart, that expectation in return works in you. Lord have mercy. Who am I talking to? It works in you and it causes you to prepare. I want to help somebody here because God has spoken some things to you that are beyond what you are experiencing. God has promised you some things, Lord have mercy, that are beyond what it looks like in your life. And because you have believed, you start moving around, you start nesting, you start doing things in anticipation. And there are people in your family or your sphere of influence, maybe your friends who have been looking at you like you're crazy because they didn't hear what you heard. But you know what you heard of the Lord. You know, an example of this is Noah and that ark, isn't it? I know, I'm sure people thought he was crazy. He said, God's gonna flood the earth. They'd never seen a flood. They didn't even know what kind of, they didn't know, they didn't have a frame of reference to know what that was like. But the Lord spoke to Noah and gave him instruction in anticipation as to what the Lord was going to do. And he gave Noah the instruction on how to survive the flood, how to overcome the flood. Lord have mercy. He had expectation and his expectation motivated him to move and to go about doing what God had told him to do in preparation. And I've been sent tonight to encourage somebody that your issue is not the situation. The issue is your expectation. Can I say it again? Some of you have been frustrated with the results you've been experiencing. Help me, Holy Ghost. You've been frustrated. You said you set certain goals to attain or to achieve a certain level or to grow in your relationship with God or some kind of worthy goal of, the, of, of some, some kind of good or worth. And you're frustrated because you have not attained that goal yet. Now, for some of you, it's simply because it's not time. You need repair. But for others, God said we, the diagnosis is that your expectation is off. Your expectation is wrong. Oh, God. You can't expect goodness and mercy to follow you if you're not following the Lord. Psalm 23. Ah. Uh, God, I really don't have time to minister this like, I'm, like I want to. But how many are being blessed already? Psalm 23. Woo, very familiar song. I really could quote it, but I feel like I want to read it. Psalm 23. Watch this, verse one. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now he says, all these things in that song, but look at verse six. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is not a promise to everyone. This is a promise to those who have made the Lord their shepherd. And some of you have been, ooh, ooh. I'm just going to say it like I hear it. 
Some of you have been following another influence that is not of God. And you wonder why goodness and mercy have not been following you. Oh, Lord have mercy. Some of you have been doing the wrong thing, expecting good to come into your life. And you're frustrated because you've been living under the lie of thinking that what you sow, you will not reap. Be not deceived, the apostle said. Whatsoever man sows, that will he also reap. Some of you have been sowing apple seeds expecting oranges. Who am I talking to? And you're tempted to get caught up and say, God, this is, your life is not what you want it to be. Hello, somebody. Your life is not where you wanted it to be. And you're frustrated. And then you're tempted to go into victim mode and say, it's because this, this person did this to me or this situation, this situation. And I'm not, I'm not negating how life can do a number on us and can discourage us and can harm us. But it's not always everybody else's fault. Some stuff you cause because you are operating under a false expectation. I know because, look, KOTK fam, you know how we do. You know I say this in love. If we don't address it, you can't be healed. Hey, glory to God, I felt that thing. If you don't address the lie, you can't overcome and some of you have allowed the lies of the enemy to get you to think that you won't surely die. <laughs> Sound familiar? That's what he does to pervert your expectation. That's what the enemy's been doing. He's been perverting your expectation. My God, I feel it. And God is saying he wants to set you free because once your expectation comes into agreement with what God has promised, and the word of God, don't you know that will put you in the middle of God's will? You'll start functioning in the way that God would have you to function? My God, because your expectation is of the Lord. Woo! You can't say you're expecting of God and feel comfortable in breaking his word. You can't say that you're truly expecting of God and not have an issue with your own disobedience and rebellion against his will. I know I'm helping somebody. And you're frustrated because what you really want to do is do what your flesh feels like doing and get a divine outcome. You want to live according to the flesh, but get spiritual benefits. Who am I talking to? And it doesn't work. But... When you align your expectation with the word of God, when you repent or you think, you rethink, you think a different way, you think God's way of the situation, and you say, no, wait a minute. I've been doing the wrong thing because my expectation has been off. I've been going down this road to, to place A, expecting to get to place B. I need to shift to the road that gets to place B. How many, how, how many understand what I'm saying? It's the power of expectation that when your expectation is in agreement with the word of God, it moves you to function according to the will of God. When your expectation shifts and comes into alignment with the word of God, it moves you to function within the will of God for your life. Lord have mercy. Who am I talking to? God is saying tonight, it's time to clean up your expectation. You've been trying to fix your results without addressing your expectation. And the problem is not your result. Your results and your outcomes have been consistent with what you've been doing. The problem is that what you've been doing has been off because your expectation has been off. Because your behavior is governed by your expectation. Your behavior is governed by your expectation. Can I say that again? Your behavior... It's governed by your expectation. Jesus put it this way. According to your faith, so shall it be unto you. Or in another place, the apostle said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Even if you don't believe, you are living accordingly. If you don't have expectation, there's somebody who's talking about, you know, people who 
do with laziness and they're just lazy. And laziness is a form of sin indeed, but the root issue of laziness is a lack of expectation. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, the Bible says. So when you don't have expectation, it makes space for laziness and lethargy to creep in. Oh God, procrastination creeps in when, it, when your expectation is low. But how many know when expectation comes, it, it like rubs the engine, it ignites, it motivates you or moves you to function according to the will of God. I want to close up with another familiar passage, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Now, many take this passage and they apply it to everyone yet again. And they forget that part where it says those who love God, those who are the called according to his purpose. My God have mercy. It's not to everyone, but it's to those who love God. That's the principle. To those who are the called according to his purpose. If you are not, if you don't love God, if you're not operating according to his purpose for your life, that promise does not apply to you. Because guess what? God works all things according to the counsel of his will. But, somebody say but. When you love God, when you prioritize him, when you seek him, when you look to see him, when you expect him to manifest in your life, Lord have mercy. Woo! It will shift you. It will cause you. It will cause you to be disciplined. How many know what I'm talking about? It will cause you to want to walk upright because you have expectation. Like a woman preparing to give birth to a child. There's certain things she doesn't eat, certain things she doesn't drink because of the, because of the child that's coming. She's expecting. Somebody put in the chat and say, I'm expecting. I'm expecting. Somebody might say, expecting what? The goodness of the Lord. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 27, somewhere around verse 13, said, I would have lost heart. I would have lost, lost heart. I would have fainted. Lest I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Then verse 14, he says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. There goes that word wait again. What is the psalmist saying? He is saying, if anyone, if, if to anyone, to himself, let our expectation be of God. Look forward to seeing what he promised. Trust in him that he will bring what he said to pass. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Somebody might ask, what does that look like? And we get caught up in earthly and material blessings. It's not just that. It's when God's favor is poured on your life. It's when your prayers begin to become more effective. It's when you start to see healing manifest, just like Jesus said, these signs shall follow those who believe in my name. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. They shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. That's what it means for the goodness of God to manifest in your life. It's for God's very presence to manifest to a degree that people look on you and say, who is the God that you serve? I want to know him. Ah, glory be to God. Let that be your expectation. Some of you have been discouraged because your expectation has been off. You've been frustrated with results because your expectation has been off. You don't like your, the condition of your life where it is. I know what that's like. I've been there. Your expectation is off. Stop blaming your circumstance. Stop blaming those who hurt you. Check your expectation. Because ladies and gentlemen, when you focus on serving and seeking the Lord, no one can stop the goodness that he's bringing into your life. Can I get a witness? Woo! I'll say this in our close. Stop giving your enemies and your haters so much power. Some of you are so ruled and governed by your haters and your enemies and those who don't like you or those who talk about you. You suspect or you expect or you falsely think that your wholeness, that your peace that your joy is being held hostage by their approval. And God is saying, if you just focus on making your expectation of me, of the Lord, that is, then regardless of those who come against you, I will cause you to overflow with my goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Yes, you may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but you don't have to fear evil because the Lord will be with you. 
And when God is with you, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Lord have mercy. Expectation. Your expectation has been off. And recalibrate it. That's what God has sent me to do. To recalibrate your expectation. Stop going down the wrong road expecting to get to the right place. Can I make it personal? For years, eating has been a struggle for me. I still have to stay on top of it, if I may be honest. You know, I'll splurge every once in a while. Those, who, those of you who know me, you know I'm a vegan. I promote a vegan diet, especially a whole food plant-based. Even some vegan food is not healthy. And I noticed, even in my early years of becoming vegan, that I wasn't experiencing the results that I desired. Until I made another shift and I focused on eating more whole foods or whatnot. I won't go too into those details. More whole food, plant-based. Those who know about that, you know the significance of it. Google it later on. That's not the purpose of this video. But I said, I said all this to say, I said all that to say this. I had to get to a point where I made a choice. And it's a choice every day. There are opportunities every day to eat something that doesn't edify my body. I'm giving you an example, and y'all, while y'all might want to pick on me, for you it may not be food, it may be something else. Mm-hmm. Whatever your something else is. The principle is that I came to the realization I can't eat this, I heard somebody say, and look the way I want to look. Feel the way I want to feel. Experience a level of health that I believe that God has ordained for me. I can't keep sabotaging myself by gorging myself on food that does not edify and expect to get where God has me to be health-wise. Who am I talking to? Because though I'm giving my own example, fill in the blank. How is it you've been spelling relief? God is saying he wants what's best for you. Your expectation has been off. And it's time to address the false expectation. For some of you, you may be expecting to go to heaven. Expecting to live a good life. But you have not given your life to Jesus Christ. You've not been born again. You have no idea a lot of the stuff that I said because you don't have a relationship with God. God is drawing you even now. And he's telling you that he loves you. He's telling you that he has goodness in store for you but he's calling you to shift. He's calling you to rethink, to change the way you think. The word you commonly hear referred to is repent. Repent, change the way you think. Yeah, this world has many things to offer you, but nothing, nothing can compare to what we have in Christ. Let your expectation be. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you and honor you for your presence in this place. We thank you for showing us, Lord God, that the issue is not the result as it is our expectation. God, that if our expectations are aligned with your word, it will position us, position us in your perfect will. Position us to receive all the blessings that you have for us. Position us to be stalked, to be chased down by your goodness and your mercy. And God, I pray that you continually highlight to us the wrong expectations that we've had, the false expectations that we've had, that we might be delivered from stagnation and come into a place of prosperity and overflow and abundance and victory, that we might experience what it truly means to be more than conquerors. God, I thank you tonight. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for how you're ministering to the now. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen, amen. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you share the link. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Make sure you email me, travis.alexis.newsom at gmail.com. Make sure you snail mail me, Travis Alexis Newsom, PO Box number 48, Riverside, Illinois, 60546, in the good old US of A. Make sure you follow me on my various platforms. DM me. You may have questions about what I've shared tonight. Feel free to contact me and reach out to me in any of these ways and I will do my best to get back to you in due time. But I'm so grateful for your presence tonight. Again, shout out to the KOTK fam. Uh, if you've been blessed by this video, again, hit that thumbs up button, share the link.
don't be selfish. Let somebody else be blessed by the content. And that's a great way to show support for me as well if you believe in this work that I'm doing. Nevertheless, until we meet again, my prayer is that everything you experience, that it may contribute to you becoming all that God the Father created you to be in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and by the power of His Holy Spirit. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you again next week. Somebody say next week. Tune in next week. God bless you.